Hello everybody, welcome back to another light novel review. Today I am talking about volume number three, the volume three omnibus collection of Seraph of the End, Gurren Ichinose, Catastrophe at 16. And this is by Takaya Kagami, who is also the author of the Seraph of the End manga. Now, if you've been following these reviews, you know two things. First of all, this is a prequel series to the Seraph of the End manga. Secondly, uh, Vertical, who released these in English, there are actually six volumes currently in print of this light novel series. And what Vertical decided to do was to combine two volumes per each of their releases. So this is volume number three from Vertical, but in reality, it contains volumes five and six as were released in Japan. Why is that important? Because I just found out, somebody tweeted me, that there is actually a volume seven coming out in Japan. And of course we have no idea when we might see that in English because the last volume of this, I was pretty sure was the end. Uh, I was pretty sure that's what I had read. So I don't know if this is a surprise to people or what the story is, but volume seven is coming in Japan, which I am assuming means we will eventually get more of this series, but who knows when. So in this volume, we pretty much pick up almost immediately after the end of volume number two. The Imperial Demons are developing cursed gear. They are trying to perfect it, make it more powerful. And of course, Gurren and his team are kind of on the leading edge of that whole thing. And it is all at this point in an effort to try and track down the traitor of the Hiragi clan, Mahiru. Now, in this volume, we are dealing with a ton of action. I mean, the pressure is on. It is coming up to the deadline of Christmas. We also, in this book, have a lot more involvement from the vampires. We see a lot more vampires. We start learning a little bit about how they're organized and what they are all about. So this volume pretty much hits the ground running and keeps on running. I really enjoyed this. Now, of course, I'm coming at this series that I have never seen the anime or read the manga of Seraph of the End. I have no idea what occurs after this series. And so, in a way, it was a unique reading experience because when you're going through this series and you have no idea what these things mean, it's kind of neat because as the characters are in the dark, so are you as the reader. Now, I know that may also be a bit frustrating for some people, but... I still say, and I said it in the very first volume, and I will continue to say it, this light novel series really does stand on its own two feet. You really don't need a lot of familiarity with the manga in order to enjoy the series. I've pretty much decided at this point that I enjoyed this enough that I want to know what happens to all of these characters that I'm going to pick up the manga and start reading it and probably do videos here on the channel about it because, you know, hey, why not? But I kind of noticed something now as well. And, and now that I've told you the seventh book is coming out in Japan, which kind of ruins this theory, but, but hear me out because for me, these three books as these omnibus volumes really reflect the growth of Gurren Ichinose. And as much as the books are about setting the stage for how the disaster happens that destroys mankind and leads to the rise of vampires, as much as the books are about the development of the cursed gear so that mankind actually has a fighting chance in the new world order, this series, I think, is also really about the headspace of Gurren Ichinose as a character. In volume number one, we have Gurren as the outsider. The person who wants nothing to do with anybody who has anything to do with the Imperial Demons. For him, they are all enemies. They are all to be mistrusted. We get the sense that he is a decent man, but in essence, he really isn't interested in friendships. In volume number two, of course, we start seeing a little bit more of those relationships starting to develop. Gurren himself seems to resist. And he still continues to question whether his reliance on others or his desire to protect others is actually a weakness that hinders him. In this third volume, 
we start to see a Gurren who realizes that maybe these relationships are what gives him strength. That maybe the kind of strength that he has been tempted with from Mahiru and Saito, maybe, maybe they're wrong. Maybe there's another way, and maybe there's a way that he can do things himself in his own way. And so for me, like, I really, really enjoyed these three sort of volumes because not only did we have this building storyline, not only do we have all of these sort of mysteries and different organizations working against each other, not only do they have a ton of action, which is pretty well written and nicely choreographed and paced, but we also have this main central character who you can see his growth and his development. And there's conversations that he has in this book that would have never happened with the Gurren Ichinosi and volume number one. That he has a relationship with characters in this book that would have been impossible for that character in volume one to have as he was in that moment. So it's a really, to me, satisfying series that it has this really good central character. Now, of course, as I said, it is a prequel to the manga. This is not the complete story. Even if there was no Volume 7 coming out, I would still say that this one leaves you wanting more. And the only way to get more is to go to the manga and see what happens next. So if you're looking for a light novel series that's really tied up and is really nice and clean and tidy and you don't have to have, ever have to read anything else, you're going to be disappointed by it. Because definitely with the way this book ends, I mean, I try not to do spoilers, but the way that this book ends, it really is. It, it's setting you up now to take that next step and get into the manga. It isn't giving you a complete story from finish to end, all is good. However... Like I said, if you look at the progression of Gurren as a character, it is a fairly decent character arc. So even though the story itself is a really good story and a lot of fun to read, but it kind of ends at a point where there's lots more to discover, the character arc of Gurren is a really satisfying character arc. I've enjoyed this series a lot, and like I said, um, he, the, he's got me. I'm going to be reading the manga now. I just, I, I can't... After being involved with these characters and enjoying these characters in these books, I just, I can't. I'm going to have to read the manga and see what happens next. So those are my thoughts on volume number three. Definitely, if you've enjoyed volumes one and two, or you enjoyed Seraph of the End, the manga, and you've been kind of waffling about whether this prequel series is worth it, I totally think it is. It was really enjoyable, filled with a lot of very interesting and unique characters, and I've really enjoyed Gurren as the central character pretty much for the entirety of this series. So I am going to continue my sprint to try and do two light novels a week up until at least we get to Christmas when I will have a bucket load of light novels to get through at that time. So what I'm hoping to do is this weekend I will be reviewing volume number five of The Rising of the Shield Hero. Volume 6 came out this month, and uh, I still haven't even finished Volume 5, so I'm going to be reviewing this one. Hopefully that review will be up this weekend. So if you're new to the channel, don't forget to hit subscribe so you can check out all of my future light novel reviews. I've got links that you may find interesting, including my older light novel reviews. And don't forget, I don't just like to read books, I like to write them too. I've got links to those as well. So in the meantime, thank you guys so much for watching the video. I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Until then, bye-bye for now.